interesting times. Today's featured stories. The Felix Y. Manalo Foundation holds another outreach mission on Ottawa. Iglesia Ni Cristo members in Edmonton help save lives by donating blood. INC's aid efforts continue in Canada. Canada lawmaker thanks the INC before Manitoba's Legislative Assembly for its humanitarian efforts. Filipino-Canadian filmmakers make it to the Vancouver International Film Festival. Sneaker fever spikes in Vancouver. Cosmetic convention contours Vancouver's makeup fans. Plus, hockey lovers celebrate their love of the sport in the annual induction weekend. Canada's I Am Joseph cast and crew share their journey to the EVM Awards International 2018. Welcome to Eagle News Canada's special broadcast. Today marks our 100th episode. Join us as we bring you feature stories from around the nation. I am Archie Rose, Natividad Yi. Why Manalo Foundation, through the project Aid to Humanity, continues to reach out to communities in Ottawa. Sabir Mufti with the details. Today, the Felix Y. Manalo Foundation continues to extend help to the poor, especially to those affected by disasters and calamities. Its project, called Aid to Humanity, aims to assist government services by reaching out to shelters, centers, and community food banks. This weekend, through to the end of October, the FYM Foundation and the Church of Christ are handing food donations to communities in need. Like all big cities, the government does its best to provide assistance and support to the populace's various economic issues. For example, the rising cost of housing units, especially here in Canada's largest city, Toronto, where affordability has become more of a concern for more and more people, meaning non-for-profit organizations are playing more of a key role to not only reach out, but to help out. That's why today, members of the Church of Christ is doing its part to do more. Under the Felix Y. Manalo Foundation, they are reaching out to various food banks all over the city, such as Flemington Community, the Daily Bread, the North York Harvest, and here in Scarborough Center for Healthy Communities, where they're providing immediate relief by donating food to help those in need. So we would be taking all of these items that you guys brought in today. They'll be going into our market space to help us serve more families than we normally do and also being able to offer them more items than we could without those donations. So right now we estimate that we serve roughly 300 clients a week and those are the only the clients coming into the food bank. We estimate roughly 1,200 mouths that we actually feed within a week. Very, 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 very important to get donations from our community because especially during the summertime, donations tend to drop a little bit. So when we have more donations coming in, we're able to provide more support to our families. Now on behalf of the Church of Christ, and Legend of Cristo, um, under the leadership of our Executive Minister, Brother Eduardo V. Manalo, we happily donate this food so that that may be of help to those who are in need in our community. Thank you very much. the Felix Manalo Foundation for donating this food to us. They have been a great help. Um, in just this year, in the beginning of the year, in February, they have donated about 14,000 pounds of food. And today, they donated about 3,000 pounds of food. So, thank you so much. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A month ago, six tornadoes struck the Ottawa and Gatineau areas, affecting thousands of residents. Homes were destroyed, and many lost power and food. The Felix Y. Manalo Foundation continues its Aid for Humanity outreach program from Gatineau to Kinburn and Dunrobin, areas affected by the tornado. Today, the Felix Y. Manalo Foundation reaches out to the Ottawa Food Bank to deliver food donations and winter care packages. So after the tornado, the Ottawa Food Bank uh, had 11 food banks that lost all of their power, which means they lost all of their fresh food. So we immediately went into those communities providing food directly to those who had lost power uh, and were out of their homes. Receiving donations such as the one that we're receiving uh, from your organization will help uh, replenish our shelves here now that we've sent out so much food. We just want to share our sincere thanks to your organization for such an incredible donation and such incredible support. Uh, I know that this isn't the first time you've done this for 
for us and we're just really grateful to receive this uh, food today and know that it will go into the community immediately to help those who are most in need. We are here in the western tip of Ontario, Canada in the town of Leamington where the FYM or Felix Y. Manala Foundation has gathered and reached out their hands to many migrant workers, seasonal farmhands and local residences to provide well-stocked winter care packages to show love and kindness and their care to their fellow men, but all the more to show true Canadian hospitality. And held our Lingap Pamamahayag or Aid for Humanity Evangelical Mission in Leamington. And uh, there were 61 people who benefited from it. And not only that they received care packages, they also listened to the words of God. And with God's help, 56 of them signed up for Bible study. To God be the glory of that. Through the mercy of our Lord God, we were able to help those seasonal workers that happen to also work on farms, just like our brethren. They have come from far and wide, whether it be the Philippines, whether it be uh, Mexico or even Cambodia, just to be with us this evening in the hope that they can meet their needs of their daily life. On behalf of three locales, we were able to prepare uh, winter accessories, especially in preparation for the upcoming winter, which includes toques, uh, mittens, and we also have given them a hand towel for work while they are in their farms. Uh, we also included toothbrushes, which is in accordance with their hygiene accessories, and canned goods, so that if ever, especially during the winter, they are not able to go out or they're not able to have time, whether it be they're working, they would be able to have food ready, just in case. In line with this, the FYM Foundation continues to show their love through donations of food to many food banks, such as Project Share in Niagara, Knight's Table in Brampton and Eden Food Bank in Mississauga. So this food that we're receiving right now is going to, to benefit them. A lot of them right now are immigrants that are, are coming into the country. We have a lot of them coming in right now. So uh, thank Church of Christ for this generous donation. I mean, it is a lot of food that you guys are giving to us. Uh, it'll benefit a lot of people and it'll keep our supply um, plentiful and, and keep everybody happy. In Niagara Falls, the Felix Y. Manalo Foundation reaches out to Project Share Services to extend their helping hand to families and residents who live below the poverty line. The Iglesia Ni Cristo, or the Church of Christ members, are heading to the immediate needs of the community. Members of the Church of Christ supported this two-week food drive with thousands of boxes of food, essentials, and items like canned fish and meat, canned vegetables and fruits, cereals, dry pasta, legumes, peanut butter, rice, baby diapers and baby food, and formula donated. Reporting from the Aid to Humanity in Ontario, Canada, with Marco Zerito in Toronto, Ray Mangahas in Leamington, Ira Apuyan in Niagara. I am Sabir Mufti in Ottawa, one with 25. Thank you, Sabir. With the aim to help meet the constant need of blood, members of the Church of Christ in Edmonton rolled up their sleeves and took part in a blood donation. Thomas I. Likeness with the report. Members of the Edmonton local of the Church of Christ rolled up their sleeves and went to work saving lives as they took part in a blood donor clinic in the Alberta capital. For several months now, various congregations of the church have partnered with Canadian Blood Services to help rebuild blood stocks. Not only is blood needed to treat traumatic injuries, but is also required in surgeries and some illnesses are treated with various blood components. All of this creates a big demand for blood and this is where Church of Christ members step up to help out. For member Nicholas Schaus, this was his first trip to the blood donor clinic. Now's the time to look away if you don't want to see the needle. And how did he feel about this experience? Well, I was a little anxious because, of course, it's my first time donating, and I won't deny it, I'm not the greatest with needles, but, you know, it's very comfortable, and, and like I said, it's, I'm all relaxed now. Again, when they put the needle in me, though, I had to turn away. 
Schaus was particularly struck by the fact that the unit of blood that he donated could save up to three lives. This is um, important to do. I mean, I've always kind of believed in it, but I never really had a reason to do it. But when, but you know, I think everybody should do it because it's you know you can help not save just one, but as I was told, up to three different, uh, up to three lives, and it's our it's our uh, it's a duty and an honor to do this. Brother Emin Espanol, a Church of Christ minister, says it's the duty of all church members to help others. This is our spirit as members of the Church of Christ to help the other people and to donate blood. This is the sign of life for other people. Another minister, Brother Erwin McTallis, says it's a great feeling to know that taking a bit of time to give blood can save a life. Uh, uh, even though we do not know them, but being members of the Church of Christ, that is our trait. That is our characteristics. Members have been encouraged to continue on as donors. Activities such as today's blood donation are part of the Church of Christ's community activities, serving both members and non-members alike. In Edmonton, Thomas I. Likeness, Eagle News, I'm one with 25. Thank you, Thomas. In Calgary, members of the Iglesia de Cristo or Church of Christ continue with their aid efforts. Tiffany Alessasis with the details. The Calgary Food Bank is the most accessible food bank in Calgary, serving families, individuals, and organizations. It is not a government organization, nor a United Way agency. It relies solely on volunteer work and community support. Today, the volunteers of the Aid for Humanity of the Iglesia de Cristo and the Felix Y. Manalo Foundation give their time to help hundreds of people who are fighting food insecurity. I believe that it is important for a member of the Church of Christ to help those who are in need because it is one of our responsibility to be an integral part of the community. Um, we're taught every day that we should continue to help others and in the community they we're doing this food bank because um, it's returning the kindness to the people. Today, volunteers bring perishable items such as canned goods, pasta, rice, and other products. Boxes will be then filled, donated to, and picked up by the Calgary Food Bank. The food bank supports hundreds of other charitable organizations fighting against food insecurity and working with the community to fight hunger. Reporting from the Iglesia Cristo Church here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, I'm Tiffany Alisasis and I'm one with 25. Thank you, Tiffany. Elected member of the Legislative Assembly of Manitoba, Cindy Lamaru, thanked the Iglesia Cristo for its humanitarian works worldwide. Kathleen May Palan with the details. Less than a month after its Aid for Humanity events in Winnipeg, Canada, the Church of Christ was recognized in the Chamber of the Legislative Building and received an appreciation for all its services it had offered to the province. The Church of Christ was recognized today by a member statement in which a member of the House expresses his or her appreciation of an individual or a group for their contribution or service to the people of Manitoba. Member of Legislative Assembly Cindy Lamer of Burroughs recalls some of the aid efforts, events, and services rendered by the Church of Christ. An organization that is so huge that they are established in 147 countries, including here in Canada. The Inglesia Ni Cristo, INC, is a committed group of individuals who have decided to fulfill their pledge in extending help through aid and services, promoting education, socioeconomic well-being, environmental awareness, and health improvement. They do this through partnering up with local governments, community establishments, aid for humanity programs, and through Christian family organizations of the Church of Christ. Over the last couple of years, I, along with my colleague from Kiwaitanuk, have had the honor to participate in INC's events. I'd like to tell you about a few of these events. The first being the Worldwide Walk to Fight Poverty, this event occurred simultaneously in 44 countries across 18 time zones on May 5th. 1,140 Manitobans joined the walk, which happened right here on our legislative grounds. 
More recently, last month on September 28th, INC held an event in the north end of our city where over 3,000 care packages that they prepared were handed out to nearby residents, clients of local shelters, and those who may be homeless. The care INC provides extends across Manitoba. For example, when there was a shortage for blood donations this past summer, INC assisted in the Canada-wide blood donation drive. <coughs> and when there was a need for evacuees of Garden Hill and St. Teresa Point during last year's forest fire, they fed Manitobans who were arriving by air from affected areas. Madam Speaker, in closing, it is organizations like INC and individuals like the nine who have joined us in the gallery today, one all the way from Toronto, that are the embodiment of hope. They work to serve others, and I am hoping that today my colleagues will join me in showing appreciation to INC service to our province. Thank you. In her message, Lamra emphasized how the Glesheny Crystal fulfills its pledge to the community through aid efforts, free services, and promoting education, socioeconomic well-being, environmental awareness, and health improvement. Over the years, I've had the opportunity to come out to lots of events that have been put on by the Church of Christ and members of the group, and it truly is inspiring. And I talked about this in one of my prior interviews, just how uplifted I feel every single time. And I want to be able to bring that hope here into the Manitoba Legislative Building. So I'm hoping by making a statement today on it, it will expose the Church of Christ to more members of the Legislative the Glesheny Cristo works hand in hand with the Felix Y. Manalo Foundation in reaching out to people in impoverished areas and those affected by calamities. The efforts of these organizations have not gone unnoticed, as clearly proven by today's event. Reporting for Eagle News from Central Canada, I am Kathleen May Pangan, 1 with 25. Up next, Filipino Canadian filmmakers make it to the Vancouver International Film Festival. Sneaker fever spikes in Vancouver. Cosmetic Convention contours Vancouver's makeup fans. Plus, hockey lovers celebrate their love of the sport in the annual induction weekend. These and more when Eagle News Canada's 100th episode returns. We will be right back. Now let's face it, in Honolulu, Hawaii, we don't have towering skyscrapers like those in Toronto or majestic winter-like sceneries in Vancouver. But we do appreciate more than half a million Canadians visiting these islands each year. And with that in mind, we send our warmest alohas and congratulations to the 100th episode of Eagle News Canada. I'm Alfred Asenas, always one with 25. Thank you for your 100th episode Eagle News Canada. I want you to see the 100th episode Eagle News here in Ottawa, Canada. Hi everyone, Arnie Aquino here in the Vancouver International Airport and you might be wondering why I'm standing in front of this beautiful jade sculpture. Well, it's inspired by First Nations art here in British Columbia, the westernmost province in Canada. And what better way to say congratulations to Eagle News Canada for its 100th episode than to show you British Columbia art. So we can't wait to see the next 100th episode from the Vancouver International Airport. My name is Arnie Aquino, 1 with 25. From your Eagle News family here in Calgary, congratulations on your 100th episode. From Squamish, British Columbia, the outdoor recreational capital of Canada. Congratulations on your 100th episode, EBC Canada. Looking forward for more 100. I am Kathleen Cruz, your Squamish correspondent. I am one with 25. Happy 100th episode, Eagle News Canada, from the district staff of Canada 4 here in Mississauga. We're We're looking forward for another 100 episodes. Welcome back. You are watching Eagle News Canada's special 100th episode. 
ABC's Kathleen Cruz takes us to one of the most anticipated events in the film industry, the Vancouver International Film Festival, where the Filipino-Canadian filmmakers also get to showcase their works. Kathleen? Eagle News is here tonight for the BC Spotlight Gala and Awards for the Vancouver International Film Festival. Join us as we get to know the stars and filmmakers of this year's entries. Vancouver International Film Festival is one of the most anticipated events in the film industry here in Vancouver, Canada. The festival pays big homage to Canadian films and documentaries. Vancouver being known for its diversity also offers a large selection of international films. Well, it's a large audience. It's about 130,000 people a year, uh, admissions a year. And I think it's, a, it's a, an audience that really reflects the diversity of the city as well. Um, so, you know, we do have a very large section of uh, East Asian uh, programming, uh, one of the largest uh, sections of such things in the world outside of East Asia. Uh, we have a large uh, section of Canadian programming and a large documentary section as well. And I think when combined with uh, feature films, I think from over 55 or 60 countries, it really does allow, um, you know, the various communities of Vancouver to come together and celebrate and share uh, storytelling on screen. Filipino Canadian filmmakers are also featured at the event. Kathleen Jaime for her documentary Finding the Big Country and Sean Devlin for the film When the Storm Fades. Uh, my film is Finding Big Country and it's about my childhood dream to, to play in the NBA that didn't work out. So my, my new dream is to become a filmmaker and be the first person to interview and find Big Country Bryant Reeves, who is the first, uh, Vancouver's first ever draft pick here in 1995. Um, I've always wanted to tell the story of the Vancouver Grizzlies um, and, and the story of Bryant Reeves and when I was doing my research I found that he was the only guy that no one in Vancouver or elsewhere had been able to track down. Uh, basketball is, our, is, our, is the number one sport in the Philippines and I grew up knowing that and very proud of that and I've been playing basketball since I was five and so um, and also um, my grandfather was the youngest uh, director in the Philippines so everyone says that filmmaking is in my blood. So I would love to bring this film to the Philippines so I'm hoping to bring it to Manila soon so that family there can, can watch it as well. Meanwhile, the docudrama by Filipino-Canadian Sean Devlin, When the Storm Fades, reenacts the experiences of a Filipino family brought by Super Typhoon Yolanda in 2013. Uh, the film I made, When the Storm Fades, uh, we worked on it for four years uh, on the island of Leyte. We worked with uh, Typhoon Yolanda survivors who were uh, not actors. They were reenacting some of their experiences after the storm. And we also brought Canadian actors who played uh, aid workers, um, fictional aid workers. And so this film is really about the impacts of climate change in the Philippines and the role of Canadians in Canada and the West in uh, what they can do about that. Uh, my inspiration was seeing the impact of Typhoon Yolanda when it happened. Uh, again, this is where my mother is from and uh, I made a short documentary there with an alliance called the People Surge, a uh, group of storm survivors. And so when I understood uh, what people are experiencing there after that storm, I really wanted to make a feature film about this. Creating a film that aims to show the effects of climate change based on true events, Sean Devlin was awarded at the Gala Awards Night for the Emerging Canadian Director, presented by Directors Guild of Canada. Right after the award ceremony is the world premiere of the film Anthem of the Teenage Prophet, directed by Robin Hayes, the film adaptation of the award-winning novel from Juan Prohl, here is Cameron Monaghan, the lead actor in the film. It's about uh, this teenager who doesn't know what to do with his life. He's struggling. Um, he's a, like a skateboarder and kind of a, a slacker. And he realizes that he can see people's deaths before they happen. And the first time that happens is with his best friend. So his best friend dies at the beginning of the movie. And he's dealing with the fallout from that and um, trying to cope with the loss. <laughs> Thank you for joining us from the red carpet here in Vancouver International Film Festival. I am Kathleen Cruz. I am one with 25. Thank you, Kathleen. For all you seeker lovers out there, this next story fits you perfectly. 
EBC's Jason Manawas brings us to the Vancouver Convention Center where the sneaker fever spikes. Take a look. All eyes are on the Vancouver Convention Center for the ultimate sneaker show. This convention is called the premier sneaker event for all sneaker lovers and enthusiasts because thousands of shoes and hundreds of vendors are showcasing the classics and the latest in stylish footwear. Whether you're a hype beast, sneakerhead, or a sneaker collector, the Ultimate Sneaker Show has it all. Some vendors have pairs with the craziest and most unique designs, while others had collectors drooling over the rarest sneakers on display. But don't think just because there are thousands of silhouettes here, you'll be coming out with a new pair of sneakers. These price tags can range into the thousands. While most vendors had classic displays of their sneakers on sale, some had unique stories behind their showcase. I'm here to promote uh, my book and my artwork. Uh, the book's called Project MJ23. It's 23 Michael Jordan paintings, and each one's uh, described in a rhyme that I wrote. Ever since I was a kid, I mean, they might not be the most popular ones, but uh, when I was a kid, these are the first shoes I ever wanted. And uh, as I got older, these are the first shoes I've ever picked up uh, with my own money. So these are the most iconic shoes for me. Another vendor decided to put the artwork on the shoe themselves. It's a really popular release. You love it, but you just can't get your hands on it. It's nice to be able to, be able to make your own. And not only that, I feel like you can really express yourself in a unique way, right? Like if there's something about you you want to bring out or maybe a certain team that you're really into, why not make some sneakers that are like just for you? Sneaker fans also made their way to the convention center to trade, buy, and enjoy the friendly atmosphere. Honestly, I just love the culture in Vancouver. Um, I'm a fan of sneakers, can't ever get enough of sneakers. So I thought this is a good place to see how the local community is uh, mingling and see if I can sell a couple of pairs, maybe swap some out. Although the Vancouver sneaker community is still growing, the pace it's growing at is very encouraging for longtime fans. Vancouverites believe it won't be long until Vancouver catches up to the big cities in the east. It's a big community and really friendly people, really tight-knit community where uh, people are always willing to help each other out, which is it's really awesome. I think Vancouver has a lot more hype with clothing than in shoes per se, but it's gotten bigger in the last three years, that's for sure. Oh, we absolutely love the scene in Vancouver. This is our third year. I personally love Vancouver. I mean, the scene out here is really booming or thriving. It's, it's a lot similar to Toronto or Montreal, some of the bigger cities in Canada. So I, I say Vancouver is right there with Toronto in terms of being one of the bigger sneaker cities in the country. So whether someone appreciating the latest designs or just grateful that old school classics are being re-released, this sneaker showcase is for you. From the Vancouver Convention Center, I'm Jason Manawis, one with 25. Thank you, Jason. At Cosmetic Convention Contours Canada's Makeup Fans, EBC's Lou Aquino takes us to this year's IMATS Vancouver. Lou? We are here at the Vancouver Convention Center for IMATS, a makeup trade show for professionals and enthusiasts alike. Let's see what it's all about. Michael Key, Emmy Award winning makeup artist and founder of IMATS, speak about how he started putting on these wildly popular trade shows and how it's grown over the years. IMATS is the world's largest celebration of makeup artistry. That's what this is about. There's a lot of things that are going on in this room. There's a lot of product being sold. There are classes that are happening. But first and foremost, IMATS is a celebration of that. And people come from around the world, and we're lucky enough to do this in six cities on the planet. I created IMATS actually to promote Makeup Artist Magazine, which is our publication. And uh, yeah, we started back in the 90s and there was internet was still in its infancy so we didn't have social media and ways to be able to get the word out and so that's what usually trade magazines do is they go to trade shows but what I discovered that there was not a trade show not only for makeup artistry but not even for cosmetics which is ridiculous it's a billion dollar industry so I realized that it needed to happen and I knew that we were the right people to do it so how it's uh, expanded and changed is in the way that products are, products obviously are, are changing every day. And also the techniques have greatly improved. And the way that we end up sharing that information is, is pretty awesome because everybody is cross-pollinating. 
and we're we're contributing to that because I bring makeup artists to, from other parts of the world to the cities that we do. So what, what's great is that people get a chance to discover things that are being done in, in other places. Apart from showcasing new products, iMats gives makeup artists a platform to showcase their talents. Kelsey Fitzpatrick, one of the exhibiting makeup artists, talked about her experience. This look, I really wanted to play with super thick oil paint-like texture and actually got into makeup because I'm a painter and I wanted to experiment on a 3D canvas like a person. Um, well, I've been coming to IMAT since I was like 15 years old, like before as a makeup artist, and it's always just been such an exciting place to like try new makeup but also meet lots of cool people in the industry and now I just love to come because I've gotten close to so many people in the industry so it's like seeing my family and then getting to meet um, people that like my work is really special and it's quite cool to be a part of and I appreciate that they let me just do my art on stage like that's the best thing I could ask for. Jessica Zhu, one of the models, talk about the impact of IMATS in the makeup industry. I think it's really fun to see like uh, how different makeup artists use like using different technique for makeups and also it's really cool to see they uh, everyone have different lots of like inspiration and different ideas for makeup and stuff so it's really like fun well I think for sure it's like for uh, people who's new in this area to learn from them and also it's like a good time for them to perform performance their work or their new idea or their new design of the makeup right so yeah it's kind of like um, a big party for uh, people who is really into makeup to getting know each other and learning stuff from each other so it's really cool from the convention center here in Vancouver I'm Lou Aquino one with 25 thank you Lou ABC's Marco Zerudo takes us to the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto, where hockey lovers celebrate their love of the sport in the annual induction weekend. Marco? This weekend celebrates the Hockey Hall of Fame inductees of 2018. And what a class. Among those to be honored is the winningest goaltender in the history of hockey, the present and longest serving commissioner in the history of sports, and the very first black player to ever play in NHL history. Every year, the selection committee comprised of 18 people elect members in the following categories, the players and the builders referee category. With the NHL's rich history dating back to over 100 years, those enshrined into the Hall of Fame truly stand out as leaders of the game. Martin Brodeur, a two-time Olympic champion, a three-time Stanley Cup champion with the New Jersey Devils, a four-time Vezina Trophy winner for best goalie, who holds numerous NHL and franchise records, including all-time wins, shutouts, and games played. Broder will be remembered as arguably one of the best goaltenders in hockey. In an age of big size, heavy hitting, clutching, and grabbing, the 5'8 Martin St. Louis found a way to excel in the NHL. Though offensively skilled, St. Louis was undrafted, being overlooked by every NHL team. Those hindrances only became motivators in every level to prove doubters wrong. St. Louis spent most of his career with the Tampa Bay Lightning, where he won numerous awards, which included two Art Ross trophies, three Lady Bings, an MVP in the 03-04 season, a Stanley Cup in the same year, and in 2014, an Olympic gold medal. Willie O'Ree is often referred to as the Jackie Robinson of hockey. Being the first black player to play in the NHL, though his tenure in the NHL was short, he would go on playing for another 18 years, inspiring others to play hockey. Gary Bettman is currently the longest serving commissioner in professional sports, having held his mantle of top hockey executive since 1993. Bettman has helped the NHL grow all over North America, adding seven teams to the now present 31 team league, and guiding the league in the business model, turning what was once a $3 million league to a league generating over $4 billion today. 
we asked Batman about how he felt about expanding the game globally and the state of the NHL in general. We have a global game. We want to continue to encourage the growth of the game and of world-class hockey players because 25% of our players come from outside of North America. And we're going to continue to work hard to provide more access to the game for more people at all levels. We have the world's best athletes playing the world's best game and it is as entertaining and as competitive as it's ever been. And what we get to see every night is simply extraordinary. Jaina Hefford, a champion of champions in women's hockey and the current commissioner of the Women's Hockey League, as well as Alexander Yakushev, a star player for Team Russia during the famous 1972 Summit Series against Canada, were also inducted to the Hockey Hall of Fame. With the Hockey Hall of Fame celebrations going on throughout the entire weekend here in what some call the center of the hockey universe, Hockey fans, hockey players, and Hall of Famers can all look back at the rich history of the sport, especially through the inductees of 2018. Live from the Hockey Hall of Fame here in Toronto, Canada, this is Marco Zerudo for EBC News. Coming up, Canada's I Am Joseph cast and crew share with Eagle News their journey to the recently held EVM Awards International in Los Angeles. Eagle News Canada 100th episode will return shortly. From your Eagle News family here in Calgary. Congratulations on your 100th episode! Congratulations on the 100th episode of Eagle News Canada. We look forward to the next 100. I'm Thomas I. Likeness from your Eagle News family in the Alberta capital city of Edmonton. Congratulations on your 100th episode, Eagle News Canada. We look forward to the next 100. I am Brother Reeve from your Eagle News family here in Niagara Falls. Congratulations on your 100th episode, Eagle News Canada. We look forward to the next 100. I am Mika David from your Eagle News family here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. Congratulations on your 100th episode, Eagle News Canada. We look forward to the next 100 episodes. I am John Balingit, your Eagle News family here in Toronto. Congratulations on your 100th episode, Eagle News Canada. We look forward to 100 more. I am Tiffany Alisasis from your Eagle News family here in Calgary, Alberta. Congratulations on your 100th episode, Eagle News Canada, from the SCAN members of the District of Canada 4. We, we are, are looking forward to the next 100. Eagle News Canada's 100th episode special telecast. I am Archie Rose at TV Dad Yee. The cast and crew of Canada's multi-awarded film I Am Joseph share with Eagle News their journey to the EVM Awards International 2018. Zalisa Guzman with the details. Los Angeles, California is known all over the globe for the glamour of the TV and movie industry. Attractions such as the Hollywood Walk of Fame, Universal Studios and the famous Hollywood sign is the stage today for the first international EVMA awards in the West for In Cinema. For the first time in In Cinema, Excellence in Visual Media Awards will be held here in the Microsoft Theater, Los Angeles, California. It's a music and theater event venue that can see up to 7,100 people. Microsoft Theater holds one of the largest indoor stages in the United States and hosts multiple annual award shows such as the Emmys, Grammys, American Music Awards, and many others. This year, the District of Southwest California welcomes all the delegates who traveled from different parts of the world. Prior to this day, the organizers put together different activities for the delegates. The EVMA Awards International Experience here in Los Angeles gave them the chance to explore world-class museums and visit historically significant neighborhoods in Los Angeles. They had the opportunity to feel the California sunshine and all the excitement that comes with it.
With 120 film entries from districts all around the world, the International EVMAs acknowledges the finalists from this year's In Cinema. As we can see, it's a red carpet filled with In Cinema delegates surrounded by members of the Iglesia Ni Cristo coming from different districts here in the United States and abroad. My district is um, Southwest California. Hopefully that we um, win and even if we don't win, it, we're still winners at our district. The fact that we're already here, you're already a winner. Congratulations again. Good luck to all entries and congratulations. It's uh, very exciting and overwhelming. Be proud of your work. Um, we know uh, firsthand that you've spent a lot of effort, a lot of sacrifice and uh, we know for sure that we will be inspired by every single film that is in this entry. I was actually the ambassador for the delegates from Canada and they were so great. They were so great. They were so happy. We were always cracking jokes and stuff like that. To see their success here in Iron Cinema, EVM Awards, I feel like I'm part of uh, the Canada delegation. So um, I'm very proud of the Canada delegation and all of that you have accomplished tonight. For all of our brethren around the world, we wish to give a greeting to all and, and wish God's blessings upon all of us. For those in Canada too, our former district, we would also like to greet you and say hello. This historic event is truly a milestone for members of the Iglesia Ni Cristo as it takes place here in Los Angeles, California. With a roster of short film productions, In Cinema aims to inspire members of the Iglesia Ni Cristo to hone their creative and artistic talents. Talents such as acting, script writing, directing, video editing, sound design, production design, among others. Just like all the other film entries, Canada 2's film, I Am Joseph, shared with us their journey during the filming process. So we're back to board, going to Chicago, then to LA. We'll see you there, EVMAs. arrived in LA, waiting for baggage, it's my baggage, and uh, the transportation to the hotel. See you there. A lot of the brethren um, that helped in the in cinema film 2018. Uh, I am Joseph. Came from brethren throughout, you know, the different parts of uh, our district, well, local congregations from Mississauga, in the Mississauga area, which is now their own district. I don't know, Canada Four. Uh, we have brethren as far as even going east uh, in Scarborough, help those helping out in Victoria. There were even uh, particular scenes wherein we allowed a certain local congregation to just join, to be uh, extras. And um, having said that, well, this really increased uh, the participation. From seeing all the brethren come together, doing set design, wardrobe, hair and makeup, testing the shots and the sound, and seeing the story come to life through all the acting. It's such a wonderful experience to just enjoy the production process and to see all the members be edified in their faith in doing this production. This film has helped me come out of my shell uh, to be more social and to think outside of the box. As a person, I'm quite shy and becoming this new character who is outgoing, talkative, and more social, I was able to explore different aspects from this character. The pre-production part, I really like it because of the creative process. Um, you know, when you share ideas, when you uh, collaborate with other brethren, uh, when you challenge uh, each other's ideas, and then seeing it come together. Writing music for film is challenging. Um, you're not just putting notes to a picture. You're trying to convey a, a, a theme, a feeling, uh, that supplements what you see on screen and what you're hearing on screen with the dialogue and that was a really challenging thing and um, 
I Am Joseph affected me uh, in, in ways where I, I can improve upon that skill. I can uh, try new things and, you know, make mistakes and know when I made mistakes and fix them. And um, it, it was really a, a good way to grow um, artistically and creatively. And I'm very grateful for having that chance to do so. And these kind of ventures allow members of the Church of Christ to explore parts of, of, of themselves that they've never gotten a chance to explore or express, you know, acting, filmmaking, directing, writing, sound, editing, all of the things that are involved in a production is, is something that's not necessarily common in your, you know, twice a week worship service. You know, we're so used to being able to absorb information and, and learn and change and grow as Christians, but it allows us to creatively express you know, God's teachings through the stories that we tell. In Cinema is a project launched by the Iglesia Ni Cristo administration to promote Christian values and to also create quality productions. Every year, In Cinema receives more than a hundred screenplay entries that are reviewed according to very specific criteria, including following a theme. This year, there were a total of 44 international film finalists, of which nine came from the Philippines. After the regional competition, in Cinema concludes with an International Excellence in Visual Media Awards, an event that awards the winning film in each category. We actually won the best sound effects and the best musical score, which is so awesome because it's actually a musical movie, uh, the first of its kind. It's all about the highs and lows of life and how at the end of the day, life is always sweet because there's always something to be grateful for. In Cinema 2018 indeed has been another successful year for members of the Iglesia Ni Cristo around the world. For EBC Special Feature Stories, I am Solis Solano de Guzman, your Canada Bureau. Thanks, Zilis. That is Eagle News Canada's special 100th episode. Join us next week for stories that matter to you. Visit our websites at eaglenews.ph and eaglenewslive.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash eaglenewsph. Thank you for watching the 100th episode of Eagle News Canada. I am Archie Rose at TV Dad Yee, and I am one with 25. From the Bellagio Botanical Gardens here in Las Vegas, we congratulate Eagle News Canada on your 100th episode. I'm Victoria. I'm Alec. And I'm Anna Kui, and we are your Las Vegas Eagle News family. And we, we are, are one, one with 25. 25. Hello and congratulations to our Eagle News Canada team for reaching your 100th episode. That's 100 weeks of stories and features that matter to your audience. Here, uh, From us here, from Eagle News Washington DC, we look forward to your next 100. Congratulations Canada on your 100th anniversary. Looking forward to more great content on the next 100. I'm Lynn Pence from the EBC family of San Diego. Congratulations Eagle News Canada on your 100th episode. We look forward to 100 more. From your family here, Eagle News Washington DC, I am Rose Papa Angelis. Congratulations. Happy 100th episode Eagle News Canada. This is Sarah Nachman with Washington DC Eagle News family. See you guys on air. Congratulations on your 100th episode, Eagle News Canada. I'm Rod De La Paz from your Eagle News family here at the Jersey Shore. We couldn't be happier to congratulate EBC Canada for reaching 100 big episodes. And from Los Angeles, California, our bureau wants to join your bureau in saying for the 100th time that we are one with 25.